structure of business object data services. We must need to understand few of the things before we get into and jump into it. Well, certainly the packaging will have the distribution what we are going to get it for business object data services by SAP consists of all the primary administrative and client tools available inside it. Well, the architecture speaks about if you look into the picture, sorry Murti, I didn't get it, sure, please let Amar know. One architecture which has been given over here in front of us, which showing up the two important things as we know the one, the engine which triggers up or which manages my repository and the other thing, the other engine which is nothing but the integration services which we call it job server. So if you look at it here, in the bottom of the part in the architecture, you'll find that we are having a lot of servers engaged. It. So primarily if I wanted to sketch it, my bottom layer is going to be a data source layer. The bottom layer is going to be a data source layer. So this data source layer is responsible for doing the connectivity with the sources, all the heterogeneous sources we are having it within the requirement. At the same time, this layer will have all the connectivity available to communicate with all of my heterogeneous sources. What I mean by that, I need to have it, all the connectivity to the sources, whatever needed for further manipulation of the data which is going to be managed and addressed by certainly a instance or an object called data store. In, in business object data services, the connectivity which we draw it between source to the internal environment is going to be called as data store. So all the data stores will be specified with its own connection property could be the native connector or ODBC connector. We can use it if we are communicating with any of the DB sources. So that is what it has been explained over here. We have, we have in this architecture which has been newly given by SAP, we have two different uh, sections if you can see it in this data services. Basically, if you look onto it, we have this entire thing distributed in three different layers. The first layer, if you can see it, the bottom one kept with a lot of servers and engines, which is responsible for moving all our information, executing stuff towards the business object environment. I can see that the whole repositories and everything has been kept onto the second layer where the movement of data or data sources are having by these engines. So what I have over here, if you look at it here, in main data services engine, I have job server and access server as two of the different kinds of jobs we can design it underlying to business object data services. One is your bad job and other one is your real time job. So the bad job will be handled by the job server engines. Whereas real time is going to be accessed by your access server. 
at the same time you may can see for each job server we have a different engines running behind it so depending on to the load and depending on to the type of execution we are doing it into the batch job we can we can specify our engines like like distributions how many distributions we wanted to have it so that we can maintain the load at the same time these engines are having in built of a dictionary and directory which is attached to the address server the task of this address server is to identify the stuff i'm looking for suppose i process the data and it has been saved into the bods repository if i need to call that metadata information that metadata information which is lies into the local or central repository that address engine is going to find it out into the uh, into the keyword or into the directory where we have kept it so the task which involved by the job server which actually deals with the execution planning means how the source data is going to be executed and loaded onto the target the whole thing will be handled by your job server in the batch job so it consists of your address server and address server has communication with the directories and dictionary right at the same time the other part of the job real time job have communication with the real time client with the access server those all manipulation of sources are going to be happen at this layer those all communication with the sources are going to be happen at this layer and then data is going to further move into the database server layer so we have or data access servers and then we have database server so we have access server and then we have database servers the next layer what we have is nothing but my database servers for my repository execution so there we have different different types of repositories created one is my cms repository it's a central management server repository is is one of the major repository or one of the main repository i'm communicating with it is one of the main repository i'm communicating with if this server is up then only i can start working on a business object data services too because this server lies for the database repositories this server lies for the database repository where i'm logging in i'm logging into the cms central management server itself so this is my cms repository means it's a major repository main repository i can see that if i'm using an information steward of business object data services i have a information steward repository as the task is going to be different so that the repository is going to be different we are not doing normal etl things we are working on somewhere onto this information steward so there is a dedicated repository needed and we have that so we on the database server we have this uh, dedicated repository available onto it then at the end i can see that we have a bods repository which can have local or central and profiler repository which is a category of my business object data services repository list so here i can see that i have a repository server which is dedicated to the developer dedicated to the administrator and dedicated to the data as local central and profiler repository so the next layer i can draw it over here yes yes as the question is there is address server part of the job server or job server also refer as address server no we cannot 
uh, refer uh, job server as an address server because uh, the address server is one of the entity of the job server engines specifically. You may can understand the point like this. Job server have the engines which does the execution, okay? And these engines holds up the address server and the dictionary and directories related to my business object data service. Where the job server ha is a, the big entity which holds up all of them. All right. So as I was saying that BODS repositories are three types, local, central, and provider. So depending on to the need, if a developer need to develop anything, they will have the local repository and there will be a central repository to store all those items into one place by the administrator and there is a profiler repository added into it apart from the compared to the other ETL tool which used to manage all the data profiling things. Apart from that, when the data has been processed into the repositories and it has been saved, now it's time to access them. Once it has been placed, now it's time to access them. So we have here the user interface. On the top, we have a presentation layer, and we can say that we have a GUI uh, versions. Uh, all three, if you can see it over here, these all are nothing but the web-based uh, tool, the CMC, one of the uh, centralized tool for entire business object uh, packages. Like if you are dealing with business intelligence, if you are dealing with ETL world, if you are dealing with planning and consolidation, the tool which is common to all this packaging is CMC. It's a whole, whole administrative tool for entire three different categories. Well, it comes different in different distribution with all the functionality. So CMC is nothing but a central management console and administrative tool dedicated for the entire business object group. Well, information steward, information steward, a tool for information management. We have also, uh, this tool available as a web-based console or it is a web-based application. So it is going to be accessed onto the web. The point of using web-based application is to uh, independent from the system and independent from the location as well. So some of the tool which relates to the administration and high level talks that always going to be web based. And that is what happened over here. The CMC, the major administrative tool, the information steward, high level talks tool, and the BODS management console, a dedicated, dedicated management uh, console. All of them are nothing but a web-based application. They can access through the browser itself. At the last, in the user interface, I can see that there's a tool which comes at the end called BODS Designer. It is one of the prime tool in the package to be used for giving the solution to the client. So here we do the designing process of my ETL flow within the SAP Business Object Data Services environment. Apart from that, we do have more tools available like Server Manager, the Data Services Server Manager, Data Services Repository Manager that deals with doing management on server side, job server side specifically, and management onto the repository side by repository manager. But that has not been listed over here because uh, that works behind the picture, that they won't come in front end. So they always used to be used for configuration of my designing process. Once we have the job server and repository services designed, then only I can start working on designer. That's why the designer has been given and those two are taken at the back end. So this is what the architecture which lies of the three tier architecture. One is the data source, I mean, I can mention the second tier is the uh, 
uh, uh, tier which is storage tier and on top we have interface tier. So three tiers. The three tier architecture we are having over here. Every time we process the data in BODS, we have the data processing happen through the through these engines, through these uh, servers, which has been kept into the bottom there. Now, coming to the next thing. as it is important on the side. Designer, designer has both the access, or I may can say that designer has access of our, all of the repositories. Where you can see that the local repository, a local repository stores the metadata of all the objects like projects, jobs, workflow, and data flows. And the source and target metadata definition by developer in SAP BODS designer code. Whereas centralized repository used to multi-user development, and same thing what I have said earlier, the same thing has been taken up over here. The job server and the access server. Look at the point over here. The SAP Business Object Data Services job server retrieves the job information from the respective repository and start the data engine to do the processing of the job. Whereas the access server, the SAP Business Object Data Services access server is a real-time E e request reply message, a broker that collects message requests, routes them to the real-time servers, and delivers a message reply within a user specified to the time frame. Like the example which I have put up for ATM transaction, which we do it uh, every day, is one of the example what I can say it uh, for the real-time servers or, or real-time jobs we are having it. So every time you do a transaction through the ATM or bank, you'll get a message instantly. You'll get a message on your mobile. It's a kind of flow which is happening with the support of ETL itself. The bank server, it's creating a message and it is sending to the, to the number registered to the bank so that it goes to the telecom uh, channel and it will be delivered to your mobile. That is how it's happened. That lies under real-time processing. And that is one of the example of real-time job we are having it in real. Access server, as I mentioned, access server is dedicated for your real-time processing. management console, and so on. Well, the point is, these are the specific uh, tools or we are having it within it. So why not to look into it and find out how they looks and uh, uh, how they look like and what basically they are of. So for that sake, we need to get into the remote desktop connection, uh, which is going to be given to you as well as the same to which we need to connect with, which is pre-configured at our end. So um, let me get into this remote desktop connectivity. Well, now, we are into the system now. And if I go into the all programs, I can see the distribution available over here as a data services 4.2. And in, a, a, if I get into that, I can see that the list of tools available to us is data services designer, data services management console, data services repository manager and data services server manager. Well, you may can say one thing that where is your CMC? 
the CMC which you were saying that is not been enlisted into it and where I can get it? Well, CMC, which is a central management console, lies for all the business object category tool used in the market. Well, what I'm talking about every time business object group, business object group, what it basically it is. Well, to understand that point, I think I have already explained it, but even then, I'm just going to take it on and show you that, what exactly I'm talking about. What SAP has did after having acquisition in 2008, he has made, or they have made a group called business object. This business objects group is now holds up three different solutions in three different packages. One is my business intelligence package with the name of Bob J or business object business intelligence, the formal name of it, SAP business object business intelligence tool for the purpose of reporting and analysis. So this is one solution I'm going to have it under this group. The second solution what I'm going to get it is a ETL solution, what we are discussing now. All right. At the same time, I do have another solution called Business Object Planning and Consolidation, BOPC, SAP BOPC for Planning and Called consolidation. This is nothing but the. It's a EPM tool. It's a enterprise level planning tool. So these all tools are now being categorized under the group called business object. And certainly the CMC, which is more onto the business object side, but also deals with the entire list of groups we are having it. So the version. If I would have installed only the data services have got for CMC is CMC Enterprise. So there is a separate instance going to be available for the CMC for independent installation. As the system, as this remote desktop is already have those all category specific tools available that's why it doesn't have CMC separately even means I do have a business object business intelligence implemented I do have a BOPC implemented as a result what will happen I will have confusion in mind that uh, the CMC is not yet there but it is there inside the list as not an independent tool or dedicated tool for BODS but a common tool for all. So how the CMC looks like? This is the symbol of my central management console which is a web based tool. If I wanted to get it to there, Here I come and this is my CMC, you can see it uh, and uh, here is the, all the details which I needed to go on. You must need to have the server name or system name with the port number 6400. This is the default port, default port on which uh, your client tools are working, 6400. And you may can see it. Um, 
your uh, Apache Tomcat, which is working as localhost 8080 is the port number on which it is running. Username, whatever username you have been given or it has been given to you, and the password, all the authentications, has taken as enterprise. Now the credentials are as following. So once we enter our, all those specified credentials, I can see it, we are logged in into the management console. And this console has a variety of operations we can do it from here. Well, if you can see it, we have an organized menu, we have defined menu, and we have managed menu. There's three ways of dealing with this tool. Either I can go with this category, I can go with this drop-down menu, and I can go with this toolbar menu. Any of them is fine. The same option is available at all three places, same exactly as it is what we are seeing onto our front, into the category menu. Well, in the category menu, apart from folders, users, profiles, server, Apart from that, we have integration into it for the data services and information stored. Well, for data services, we used to configure the repository, then it used to come into the CMC so that it can be available by any of the system at any point of time. And also, it do have, as I mentioned, information stored configuration or integration happened, so it can also assist to that environment. So any kind of user, uh, so I suppose like user creation, user role defining, authentications, uh, logging credentials, your repository management, information steward dealing, those all will be done by CMC. But we do have certainly a specific tool for administration in business object as well. What it is for? Well. If I'm going to that specific category, and getting into the management console, as it is a console, it is going to populate it onto the browser. Now, getting into it and entering my password. This management console looks different, not like as we had a CMC. It has fewer options available. We have administration options available by which we can manage uh, and uh, we can make everything execute, uh, make everything proper. If anything needs to be executed, we can plan it up. We can handle the bad job. We can handle the real-time job by using them. It is suitable for both of it. So all the administrative tasks would be underlying to this management console. Not only that, it do have an access of our uh, analysis. Suppose like there is so many errors have been appeared. I don't want to see that. Uh, those unsupported things into it. Well, what I'm trying to say here is apart from the administration, you can see that impact and linear analysis, which is one of the option to this data services to facilitate it with some kind of browsing towards the tables which we have taken up, just a view of a table in a model view. Then we have auto documentation. If we are going to configure my auto documentation, every time we do uh, have an execution plan happen or execution happening, it will create a default document which is going to be shared into the shared directory or it is going to be kept into the repository which is assigned to it. 
operational dashboard. This operational dashboard let us uh, uh, get the information about how many jobs has been successfully in, in uh, done, how many jobs are failed in between, how many are terminated falsely. That means it's talking about the reports of execution planning and execution. This tab, operational dashboard, is all about that. If I need to go and do the validation of data, I can go and do the validation of data under data validation tab. It actually evaluates and uh, basically validates the data and the rules which have been set up so far so that data services, bad job, can quickly review and access the entity. At the last, we have a data quality reports uh, which is going to form into different different format for sending it to the further use to the power users. So this management console comes with the not various operations, but the operation which is dedicated for the data services itself. Now coming to the third thing, apart from the data services and uh, CMC, we do have for the more tools within it called server, uh, your repository manager tool where I can see that it's a small window which has been appeared is nothing but the repository manager tool. This tool is dedicated for managing my repository on a specified database. So what is repository by the way? Any idea guys? I know that it's a very small question for you guys, but even then, anyhow, that's nice. Thanks for the response. Well, guys, uh, repository is nothing but the database. It's a default database, a secure default database, where all my designing and developments are going to be saved. Well, how it is going to be secure? Well, normally the database we are having it, I can go and I can get into it. Whereas if the repository has been configured on the database, that letting all my content to be encrypted so that if I'm getting into the database, I cannot see except then my system tables. So here I can see that this data services repository manager helping us to, helping us to build up those system tables. It is helping us to build the area of the database which we have dedicated for repository to be turned as a full functional repository by generating tables into it. All right. So that's why we have an option available over here for repository type and database type. That means what kind of repository would you like to create it, whether it is a local repository, global repository, or profiler repository. All those three categories are enlisted over here. You may can go ahead and you can check out your repository for that. If I am a developer, if I want my own dedicated repository, I will select my local repository and I can go and I select my database where it is going to be configuring it to be work as a repository. So here is the list of set of date, date, databases which we have it as a recommended database for repository purpose. Most of the places, most of the applications, DB2, Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle, SAP HANA, and SQL Anywhere. Not only that, we do have a Cybus ASE. So these are nothing but the databases we are having it for the purpose of repository. So either I can have the repository ready with me or I may not be doing so. So anyhow, if there is any repository associated already, we don't need to create it. But 
if there is a database, blank database, if it need to be turned to be work as a repository, I'm going to configure it by using this repository manager tool itself. So what it does after doing the selection of the repository type and database type, I need to define its version and the server name and the other properties like the port number and the username and password. Once we are done with that, we can say create so that it will start generating the system files related with all the properties for security. Well, it's nothing like that, but to be understand that in, in, a, in a such a way, I can say that uh, the database is like a beer land. Uh, there's nothing over there. It's just been plotted out. Anybody can access that uh, plot any point of time. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, build a wall all across the plot by fencing them. Only there is a main gate with the lock which is a point of uh, entrance inside the plot. So at that point, if someone like to move on and someone like to move into, into the repository or into the database uh, which, is, which is holding up all other informations, they can easily do that. But what if? What if if I am have I haven't have a key for the lock and the boundary has been stretched out all across the area? I cannot access it. I cannot get it into it. If I get the key, then only I can get into it. So that is what it is going to do. In this white space, it is going to give you the log, which is going to be live running logs to show that how the repository configurations are happening into the defined database. Well, the next tool is going to be used for uh, your defining of your job server. Well, this was for repository services. We have defined any database as a repository and that's how we get uh, our repository services in there. Now the next uh, tool what I have is a small tool for defining my uh, execution engine towards the business object data services. We call it job server. The job server is the responsible server for execution of my ETL design in business object data services. Each repository will have its own nothing but its own job server. Means we need to dedicate a job server to a repository. Well here is an option. If I need to define a job server, I, I need to configure the one. As of now there's nothing inside it. So I need to configure a one, so I can go and I can configure, but uh, I think the rights are not there to do so. So we cannot do though. We need to get the rights to add the services onto it. Well, when you click on new, it will prompt you with uh, a window saying that, let me show you the existing one at least uh, we can see that. This is what the window we are going to have it uh, start appearing when we are saying uh, uh, we need to create the new one. Here we can define the name, the name of the job server and the port number starting from 35002-3599. In between in between any of the number we can pick up and we can start using it. No two numbers are going to be common for the job servers. It won't accept it. So the port number you have used it already. You cannot use it for the uh, for job server creation. Make sure that. Apart from that, 
we need to fill up the what kind of database uh, we are going to have it on which the repository has been specified and then the database server name, database name, username, password. So the databases name are basically the databases of the repository uh, which we have created. And then we can proceed further by saying, okay, it will validate everything and it will create a job server to us. Uh, can we exchange with other DB? Yes, we can do that. Regarding the repository you are asking. So the point is, when I'm trying to exchange our DB, yes, we can do that. But the DB which we have chosen newly is also need to secure it. So we need to generate a boundary towards it. Means we are going to draw a system table towards it so that it can behave the same as the previous used to be. Yeah, in terms of repository, if you are saying, can we exchange the repository? Suppose I have taken two of the database, one is the SQL Server and other is the Oracle. First, I started working on Oracle database to uh, taken as a repository, default repository for business object data services. Okay. Further on, I thought of using its SQL Server to be uh, as a repository because it is more easy to handle on SQL Server rather than Oracle and also it is not uh, expensing at all. So as a result I am just migrating my repository uh, on that part of time what I can do is I can move my entire stock from Oracle to SQL Server else what I can do if I want to start fresh I can go into the repository manager tool and I can dedicate my SQL Server database as a repository and I can start using that repository database further on for all the development and designing. Are you getting a point? All right. So this is the task of my job server to give a execution engine to the design because design doesn't have its own uh, uh, design cannot be executed independently that needs something to be executed so the engine running behind it called job server and it has engines which taking care of all these things to find out where is the source where is the target what business logic I have applied into the design by the connection specified by us only. Well, the last tool which I'm going to take it over is one of the most important tool into the category of business object data services is nothing but data services designer. And one thing we know that very well, any of the ETL tool we are using it, it is not going to let us get into the tool till the time the default repository is not configured. As a result, one second. As a result, we must need to have a database ready with us before we are going to implement any of the ETL tool. And the same with the business object as well. We must need to have the database ready with us which is going to work as a repository for us so that we can configure that database as to be work as a repository. Okay? Without having repository, you cannot get into the environment for development. Without having job server, you cannot do the execution of that design. So here you can see that it is asking for the user credential. Not only that, it is also saying specify your repository, then only you can get it. So let me do so.
Now I specified my user credentials and once my user credentials are validated, it is going to prompt me a list of repository that has been available over here. If you can see it here, the repository is whatever we are having. The recommended repository to which I'm having access is HANA user. I can go and I can select and I can say OK. couple of more seconds it will take. All right. So now this uh, designer tool has boot up and it has appeared in front of us. Well, let's understand the tool itself. This is a Eclipse structure which lies uh, left side two division and one broader side onto the right hand side. Well, the upper part of it, apart from the toolbar, and the menu bar holds up the project area. Well, the project area is nothing but the area where all of the business object, data services objects exist. What I mean by that, I mean all of my development entities are going to be placed onto it. Like if I need to start with any designing process, I first need to create a project. Project is nothing but a, a folder. Project is nothing but a folder which consists of which consists of nothing but which consists of nothing but all the sub entities in the hierarchy. So project is nothing but a folder. It's a collector of similar kind of job related to a project or any kind of job related to a project, all right? After a project, we need to define the next object in the hierarchy. So the next object in the hierarchy used to come up as a job. It doesn't matter whether it is a server job, what I mean, real-time job, or my bad job, doesn't matter. So I need to define a job into it. Once the job has been defined, next level of hierarchy of an object is nothing but your workflow. Where workflow defines or specify the execution plan. When and what is going to execute within the environment. Then underlying to the workflow we have data flow. Under the data flow, our actual ETL design is going to be available. So basically, this is the hierarchy of uh, or uh, hierarchy of uh, object under de designing in business object data services. Basically, project, job, workflow, workflow, and uh, data flow and ETL. Well, let's see that if I'm going and proceeding with new, it is letting me ask a project first. Then only I can proceed with a job, workflow, data flow, and ETL design within it. There, at the bottom of the project area, we have a local object library connected with the repository which holds up all the instances we are going to create it. If I'm creating a project, it will be saved over here. If I'm defining a job, it will be saved over here. If I'm creating a workflow, it will be saved over here. If I'm defining a data flows, I'm, I'm going to get it over here. All list of transformations are available over here. There are a few of the transformation and few of the options are available on the palette. Once the designing area will appear, you will see the palette with the sorting option. But most of the transformation lies over here into three major categories. The data integrator category, the data quality category, and your platform-based transformations. So these are the list of 
or categories of transformation we are having in which whatever transformation lies on, we need to check it out. After that, we have all the connections. We have built it with the sources, DB sources specifically. Then we have a connectivity to the flat files, different, different flat files we can communicate with and their respective connections will be shown up and this, their respective files will be available into the repository. And then we have functions and formulas. If we have created, it will be stored into the local object library, which is uh, attached with or connected with the repository so that it can be directly saved there. So let me populate one of the job over here so that you can see that designing area. So once I have this uh, project open, I can see the project area has now showing up one of the project which has been stored into the repository where I can see that one demo. The name of the project is one demo. I can go and I can double click on it and I always I can modify the name of it which is going to uh, which is representing actually the project I'm dealing with. So I can have the project name specified over here in this uh, dotted box. Okay. Then after project, we have nothing but the jobs creation. I can create any of the job. Could be bad job or could be real time job. So here I can see that this symbolizes it's a bad job. Usually the naming convention which we use it to define these all uh, hierarchy objects is nothing but prefix with whatever we are creating. Suppose I'm defining a bad job, their name is going to be a job underscore whatever name we want to have it. So underlying a job, we have a workflow. The name of workflow is also going to be the same way. WF is going to be a prefix with the name you want to have it. And for data flow also, DF is going to be a prefix word, which is going to be added into the word you want to specify it with. And as we know that in under data flows, our actual ETL design is going to be available. So here is my source, here is my transform, uh, here is my target, and here is my transformation, which is going to be for any kind of manipulation. Well, you can see that he is a parrot list where one of the most important transformation and widely used transformations has been listed over here. Its name is query transform. Query transform is one of the highest used transformation across the business object data services designing category. Well, this is the whole overview we are having it. Apart from that, if I wanted to execute the job, the only executable job in the hierarchy of what we have is nothing but my jobs. Job is the only executable object within the list of these objects. I cannot execute directly the data flow. I don't have that right. I cannot execute the workflow directly. Only instance of job is facilitated with the execution so that all of the things which lies under it is going to be executed. So here is the execute option which is going to be highlighted when I'm selecting the job over here. Not only that, if you do the right click, you will find the execute start debugging options to the job. The concept behind it is very simple. We have a package. The job is like a package. We'll have it underline that package. We'll have workflow, data flows, ETL design. So that I want to run the package, not the individual design or individual content within it. So each job will have its own one design. Okay. Respectively, if I wanted to have it multiple design, I may can have it two workflows. I may can have it two workflows. If these two has to simultaneously run one after another, then I'm going to have it designing like this so that 
if I'm going to trigger the job, first this will be trigger, and then after this will be trigger it. Out. So this is how it works. This is how it behaves towards the business object data service and designer environment. As it is a single environment for execution, let me uh, let me show you. When I'm trying to execute this job, uh, well, let me select the job. If all the connectivity is fine with it, then I, it will be executed. As business object is a user-friendly environment, most of the tasks we do by dragging and dropping activity. The same window is available for all those execution planning and monitoring within one environment. So that is what the another thing which is about uh, business object data services which makes it more popular in the market and that is why it has been grown and replaces uh, some of the leaders in the ETL category like data stays and some of the places it also has replaced Informatica power center. Well, and we can say yes and what you can see, this is your execution property. And here is the job server. If you can look it over here onto this side, specifically on this side, you may can put your eye onto this side. You will find that there's a server which shows up over here. That server is nothing but the job server. If that server is not running, you cannot do execution. So to check with it, let me do that. You make it put your mouse cursor onto it, and onto the left hand side, it will show that if the server is running, it will show that job server and its respective name. So if you can see it over here, the respective name of the job server has been shown up. When I put the mouse cursor, the respective job server name has been showed up. So here, if I wanted to execute my job, I need to click on execute. Then this is my window of execution property where uh, I have certain settings which I can manage it. I can do certain settings for that, but if, if the setting are minimal then we can go ahead with it and we can say okay here is the three tabs which shows the uh, detail log the first is the trace which shows the detail log the second one is a uh, minimum log which shows how many records have been passed from one step to second step and the third is nothing but the error window which shows up if there is any error so you can see that here is the list of logs which has populated just in front of us uh, once the job has been executed. Well, the point is, you just did designing, you just did execution planning, you just did your uh, monitoring. Those are all three aspects of ETL, you did it in a single environment with a single clicks, you know. That make the tools more simple and easy to operate on. So these are the few things about the data services which made it more popular in the market, apart from a part of SAP family. Apart from that, it has a well integration supported to the SAP HANA, BW, and other application related to our uh, uh, SAP group. So that's all for today. If you have any query, please let me know. I'd love to answer it as we are done for the day. All right, thank you. Any query, Murti? All right, guys, so I can see uh, there is no query as such. So we'll meet up on the same time, same place. Till then, take care and good night. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye.